Hey guys, today I am talking about my experience with permanent disability and I did qualify, however I wasn't approved. I made a lot of mistakes in my application process and I wanna share those some tips for when you apply. Anyone can apply for disability if you have a mental illness. You're not gonna be approved unless you prove that this impacts your daily life. Well, I'll start with uh, how, how it started for me. I got out of jail in 2017, was severely depressed. It was after I had been in a psychotic episode for a year straight, was forced to take medication in, in jail and got out. It was the first time dealing with my illness. I wasn't really familiar with how um, much it impacted my life at that time. And honestly, I, I didn't even really want to apply. I just figured what's apply. So we called this lawyer on TV. Mistake number one, do not use somebody that runs commercials on TV. If you're, if you decide to apply for disability and you don't want to do everything yourself, you don't want to go online, fill out all the paperwork yourself because it is complicated. Go online and look for somebody that specializes in that and not somebody on multiple cases and is not going to pay attention to your case or really give a shit about. So anyways, my experience with them was I signed a bunch of paperwork saying that I would give them a certain percentage of my uh, disability benefit if I qualify, it was like a max of $6,000 or something like that. So, and disability takes a very, very, very long time. So, uh, Bill Latour, employee, uh, shows up my my house, fills out all the paperwork. A couple of months later, I get a phone call from Bill Latour's office asking me which hospitals I had been at, how long I had been there. I told him every single hospital, how long I had been there. And uh, the person on the phone sounded like they were taking notes. A couple of months later, they called again and asked the exact same question. At this point, I was very concerned. I had been denied twice already for mental. If you're applying for disability for mental illness, they're always going to deny you the first time. Oh, you will have to go to court in order to, they will keep denying you over and over again. And you will have to go to court. And I was told I would have a lawyer who would meet with me a half an hour before my court case that would call me before my court case. And the lawyer calls me and, uh, I talk to him and I say, hey, you know, you're the, the these people keep asking me the same questions over and over and over again. They've called repeatedly. Do you have all my medical records? And he got in this huge fight with me. They assigned me a new lawyer. So I get to court and lawyer shows up, um, but I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. It's about five minutes before my court case comes up and the lawyer all of a sudden pops up and, and it is there. And he asked me, why do you qualify for disability? And I'm like, uh, well, I have a mental illness that has severely impacted my life. I, I have all these, these issues now, PTSD, all this other stuff. And he says, okay. And I got really upset because it's an up upsetting question. He's like, save the crying for court. And I'm thinking, okay, this is a red flag, but there's absolutely nothing I can do about it now. So I go in the inner, the, in, in, into the court and, and this is the most important mistake. Oh, and Prior to going to court, when you first apply, they will send us, you will meet with their psychiatrist. You'll have an interview with them and they'll ask you a bunch of questions. And the types of questions they will ask you will be, are you able to handle money? Are you able to um, cook? Are you able to clean? What do you do for entertainment? Are you able to get along well with others? Let me give you an example. This is this is the, the number two big mistake that I made. Yeah, I can handle money. My, my husband gives me the debit card. I go out and I spend money and I don't blow it all unless I'm in an episode and then I will spend every last penny. The answer to that question should have been my husband handles all of the finances because I get extremely stressed out when having to comply pile the finances and I become worried. Of course I can dress myself. It should have been, the answer to that should have been, well, you know, sometimes if something traumatic is going on my going on in my life, sometimes I won't be able to get out of bed for days on end. Uh, whether my med whether I'm on medication or not. PTSD, a good example of how you might explain that you have PTSD would be to actually explain it, not say, uh, well, I have PTSD, so it really stresses me out when I have to work. No, that's not, not, not what you're going to say. You're going to say something like, well, oftentimes I'll be in the middle of my day and I'll have a flashback and the rest of the day, I won't be able to function. I'll be entire. I'll be super depressed. 
I'll start having racing thoughts and I'll have to leave. Um, so that would be the kind of example, or, you know, uh, you're somewhere and you smell a smell that reminds you of something else. And then you're right back in that spot. And, uh, you know, as far as getting along with others, you can say yes, you know, or no, whatever your situation is. I just wanted to give you some examples, concrete examples, because that, that is what you will need for court. Another thing you want to get for court is letters from your psychiatrist and your therapist. You need to be actively going to therapy. You need to be actively seeing a psychiatrist and on medication. They need to see consistency in, for example, I've been on medication for years. My medication has been adjusted several times. So there should be a long list of increased prazosin for uh, return of night sweats or, you know, um, increased lamictal because having an extreme depressive episode or starting to feel um, more elated types of things. This is the kind of letter and the information that you should have for your case. Uh, my particular lawyer didn't even provide all of my hospital records. I didn't have letters from both. I didn't have a letter from my psychiatrist on time when I should have, uh, which is a whole nother issue. Psychiatrists have a million people they have to get back to. So if you need something, some kind of paperwork from them for disability, ask for it like a year in advance because it's going to take forever and you have to be on their ass over and over again. So yeah, my big mistake when I went to court was uh, not being familiar with my illness. Uh, and really understanding how much it impact my life, having pride, being embarrassed to apply for. In court, I didn't I represent myself properly. What they do in court is the judge calls a, uh, the, like an employment consultant psychiatrist, I don't know who it is. They have them on the phone, on speakerphone, and they say, hey, is this person able to go to work? And is this person able to do this? He said that I could do everything for uh, a job that was not what I what I had done before. The, the question was asked, would this person be able to resume her original job? And the answer was no. Um, however, apparently Social Security determines whether one job is more stressful than the other because I could be a barista according to Social Security. I just can't be a media buyer because that's too much stress and that might make me ill. I said I didn't represent myself proper, didn't properly in court. I should have given concrete examples like there are days where I'm so distracted. I leave my house and have to go back five times, literally five times for my keys or or my, uh, my paperwork for wherever I'm going or my credit card or my sunglasses or my hat uh, where I have to keep coming back. This is, this is a concrete example of stress and um, anxiety impacting your daily life and your functioning. So to recap, don't use a fly-by-night lawyer. Uh, make sure you do the interview process with the interviewer from Social Security appropriately, fill out the paperwork appropriately, make sure you have all of your medical records, make sure you know what's in your medical record file. Actively uh, managing your illness with uh, a psychiatrist and a psychologist and try and get letters from them um, aside from your just medical records. Uh, know exactly what you're going to say when you're going to court. Know exactly why you qualify for disability. Um, and if you don't qualify, don't apply because it's a huge waste of time and it's humiliating when you're denied. So good luck.